I think that the decisions are made now by people who really have no training or understanding in the creative fields. They are mostly businessmen. Their only concern is, is economic. And the young people who move into the so-called creative spots, I don't know how they're supposed to have the, the understanding to do it because they have no training. They, they have no background at all in, in creative work. They don't understand writing. They don't understand directing. They don't understand anything about it. It's all economic. And this began back in those days. Uh, it began with the great importance placed upon the sales department. Glendale Tower to Pan American Trip 7. Wind east, 7. Altimeter setting, 29.92. You're clear to land on runway number 2. Pan American Trip 7 to Glendale Tower. Wilco. The controls of an airplane are elementary. When you push the stick forward, the nose drops. When you pull the stick back, the nose comes up. Company, attention. Captain Allen. Archibald. Present. Archibald. Wings for defense, wings for commerce, the symbol of our world of today, September 7th, 1941. It's a pathetically contradictory world of streamlined speed and heartbreaking strife, of achievement and destructive war. But the symbol for both war and achievement is the airplane. And the airplane is also a symbol for the great modern city of Glendale, California, one of the aviation centers for the globe-circling airlines, for training flyers for the Army and Navy, for Canada and the RAF. Yet, only a hundred years ago, this great area of factories and homes was undreamed of. Where Flintridge, Eagle Rock, Highland Park, Occidental College, Garvanza now lie, the lofty mountains stood silent sentinel over vast solitudes of waving grain fields and pasture lands. It was the Rancho San Rafael. Let's go back through the years and relive the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> On September 7, 1941, a new program took to the air over CBS's Pacific Coast Network from their Los Angeles flagship KNX. It was called Romance of the Ranchos. It was high art, a 35-episode run on the history of Southern California from the 1770s to present, written by the man you just heard, John Dunkel. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos dramatizing the romance and adventure connected with the growth of this great state. Each week at this time, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, uncovers another fascinating story of events and people who built the land we know today as Southern California. Beginning with this first episode, Rancho San Rafael, the writers, through the voice of Frank Graham, well known to KNX listeners as the star of Nightcap Yarns, told the history of the old Spanish land grants, or ranchos, from the archives of the sponsor, Frank Graham, the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Our story tonight is one I know you will enjoy, selected from the vast files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. You see, it's the business of this company to know the history of our Southland. Yes, the vast historical files of this company of necessity contain detailed records, available nowhere else in such accessible form, of California's glamorous past, back to the earliest Spanish land grants one of the first of which was Rancho San Rafael. Each week, for your enjoyment, we recreate from these records a true story, replete with the drama, gaiety, and tragedy, romance and hatred, triumph and disaster, that so filled the colorful transition period from the days of the Dones and the Gold Rushes to the present time. Our story tonight is a fascinating one, set in the fertile section of Southern California, which became one of the first of the great ranchos. Rancho San Rafael. The researcher for the firm, W.W. W. Robinson, claimed the company had more than 3,000 volumes dealing with rancho history. The years drop away as we go back, searching. This first episode also featured a man who Dunkel would later collaborate with on Gunsmoke, Howard McNear. Let us stop here just a moment. 1904. 1904 was a big year for Glendale. 
even though the town had not become a city as yet. For it was that year. Here it comes now. Here comes the first car. Yep, that's right. Here it is. It's round in the bend. And just think, man. That car will take us into Los Angeles in less than an hour. Uh, yes, and it takes three at least in the spring wagons. Well, I guess it's time to start proceedings. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. Now, folks, folks, quiet, please. I'm going to ask the man who is chiefly responsible for this great event to drive the last spike in the rails. So step up here, Mr. L.C. Brand. Well, thank you. Thank you, folks. This is a great day for Glendale, and no one will be any happier than I will to see that car roll up here. <laughs> here you are, sir. Now, pound her in. All right, boys. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. That's it. That's it, Mr. Brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. You can give the car the signal now. All right, boys. Bring her in. <laughs> There she is. The Pacific Electric is here. Dr. James. Dr. James. Yes, what is it, Dora? Come quickly. It's Father. He's dying. You mean Verdugo? Yes, yes, of course. I'll come. Hurry, hurry. As the people of Glendale welcomed the future, the past was slipping away from them. For on his deathbed lay Theodore Verdugo, respected citizen, one of the last of the Dones. And with him, time wrote the final chapter in the story of the great Rancho San Rafael. Doctor, can't anything be done? I'm sorry, my dear. Oh, Papa Cito. Oh. <laughs> my child, you must not cry. I leave you the good name of Verdugo. If I left you nothing else, you would be rich. Honor it, keep it high, where it has always been. On this land, the Rancho San Rafael, even though it belongs to others now, do what you can to make it a fine place for people to live. That is what my grandfather Don Jose Maria would have wished. He loved the Rancho San Rafael. As I have. Papa <laughs> Yes, Teodoro Verdugo loved the Rancho San Rafael as had his father and his grandfather before him. It was from that love of the land that burned in the heart of Jose Maria Verdugo that the Rancho San Rafael was first formed. But we must go back farther through the years to find that story. It was on one lovely sun-filled day in the 1770s... That Much of the series centered around the problems experienced by early Californios due to their isolation from provincial Mexico, which eventually culminated in California becoming part of the United States after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War. Well, Jose, now maybe you don't like being a soldier so much. How do I not, Carlos? Ah, sending us out into this wilderness, this desert. What are we to do? It, it isn't so bad at the mission. We are busy keeping the Indians in order, and, and we have adventure. But why do we have to leave San Diego? Think of the times we could have had there, the fiestas and the senoritas. Ah, the senoritas. And no senoritas in San Gabriel. Ah. Yeah, what you should do is get married and settle down. See, si. the fine chance I have here. Uh, too bad. You should get married and settle down, oh, too. Oh, oh, not me. I'm a soldier, and I like it. I stay a soldier. Ah, but one of these days, a lovely senorita, and phew, you'll be tired of this life. Never. But I tell you, Carlos, if I ever did decide to settle down somewhere and get married, I do not think I could find a better spot than right here. Stop a minute. Look up here. Oh, here, chapel. Oh, just look at the vista. The mountains and the green valley. And the trees. See, it's very pretty. Oh, very pretty. It's beautiful. See. Here, what's this? Jose, a party of travelers coming down the road. Yeah, it's good land too, Carlos. It would make a very fine rancho. See, near the mountains are streams. There will be fish. And there, over there you could raise corn and grapes and pumpkins for food. And there in the distance... Is pasture land for cattle. Jose, look. 
There's a senorita. A senorita? Yes, si, riding with the party. Look. Si, so it is. Accompanied by two gentlemen and a padre. Si, and she is... Madre mio, she is beautiful. Si. Buenos dias, senorita. Buenos dias, senor Cabral. May we be of service? No, gracias, senor. Our journey is almost over. I'm quite safe, gracias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Ah, what a lovely face and such a smile she gave me. I thought that this sun had just come up. Ah, perhaps this desert does have at least one oasis in it, eh, Jose? Ah, she was lovely. You noticed it too, huh? Then I know she was truly beautiful. I wonder what could her name be? Huh? Oh, <laughs> Jose, you old soldier. So you could never be charmed by a senorita, eh? <laughs> well, my friend, perhaps you were wrong. Perhaps that look in your eye is love, no? Perhaps the great Jose Maria Verdugo has been struck at last. <laughs> the sponsor's agency, Buchanan, offered free copies of a 40-page compendium booklet. And it won the 1945 award for the most effective institutional series from the City College of New York. They were married to San Gabriel Mission. And now, Jose had definite ideas about his future. One day, as he returned from his duties, his wife, Maria, called. John Dunkel was no hack. He took great pains to portray the Californios with obvious Mexican and Spanish heritage as equal to their American brethren. It's here. What's come? What is it, Jose? It is news I've been waiting for. Give it to me. No. Jose Verdugo, before another minute, you must tell me what you have to do with the governor. You've been keeping something from me. <laughs> See, Maria, I have but it's just because I wanted to surprise you. My little doll. Come here. There. Now, what would you like best to have? You, Jose. No, 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 no. I mean besides my ugly face. Well, perhaps a little one and a home of our own. See, si, that is it. I do want a home for you and the little ones that will soon be. And so I have laid my plans. Plans? What plans, Jose? Do you remember the day you first saw me? Riding on El Camino Viejo? Si, I was with the Padre and you with Carlos. See, si. And do you remember the land, the beautiful valley, which we could see from there? See, si. That is where I want our home to be. Oh, Jose, well, it would be, it would be paradise. Oh, see, si, paradise. And so I've asked the governor to let me keep some cattle on that land. If he says yes, then I can send my brother to build a house and start a rancho. And then later when it is established, the governor cannot help but allow us to make our home there. It will be ours. So you see, already our home is started. But Jose... Suppose the governor refused. Eh? Oh, no, he could not do it. I don't think he could. Maria, give me the letter. See, si, here. Uh, I'd better open it, huh? Eh? See, si, go ahead. Si, I, I will open it. <laughs> Read it. What does it say? It says, uh, I concede to the petitioner the permission he solicits to keep his cattle and horses. Oh, okay. and... Maria, do you hear? It says, I concede to the petitioner the permission he solicits. They were stories of Phineas Banning and William Mulholland, the two men responsible for Southern California's principal aqueducts, as well as Joaquin Morietta, who spent four years robbing wagon trains after drunken miners lynched his brother and raped and murdered his wife in 1849. Marietta was tracked down in 1853 and executed by a band of vigilantes called the California Rangers. He took his second step. Governor Verdugo. At the close of the final episode, Frank Graham offered listeners a free map of all 52 of the ranchos covered in the series. And the show was heard in syndication into the late 1940s. How I suffer from the dropsy. I know. You haven't ridden out on any patrols for a long time, Copper. Oh, no. Although announcer Frank Graham had a robust career in radio, film, and Disney voice acting. On the evening of September 2nd, 1950, he parked his convertible in his carport at home, turned on the ignition, and committed suicide. He had been set to resume his role as announcer for R. Miss Brooks in the fall, 
he left behind his parents and two siblings. Frank Graham was 35 years old. <laughs> 